A very good morning to each and every one of you and welcome to FYI, wherever you're joining us from, Beatrice Selby, Edward Gonzalez, Luan Hall, uh, good to have you, uh, uh, Toana Green, Toana, how are you doing this morning? Good to see you on the live and all the other folks joining us, Edward, Debbie, as I said, Debbie Collins, good morning, Debbie, Debbie all the way from the Cooperative Republic of Providence, the Independent Republic of Providence. Beatrice Selby is here as well, folks. Good morning. Trust that you guys have had a good weekend and you have hit the ground running. Whatever time we've taken from you, we're going to give you all back. <laughs> uh, good to have you here. Uh, Pamela Sanchari, uh, Samoa Williams is here. Claire Nexus, Charmley Richmond is here as well, folks. A very good morning to all of you, all, 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 without exception, wherever you guys are joining us from this morning. Great to see all of you. On the live, you all know how we see it, folks. Great to see each and every one of you uh, up this morning. And I trust, we trust, that you guys have hit the ground running. Do let us know the kind of weekend you've had. And we got so much to catch up on at our end. And Gwansi Griffith is here. Alicia Thomas, Donald Harding, George, Aubrey Stevens. Folks, what the blackout in doing with y'all? What GPL in doing with y'all? As I said, we're honored and privileged to have all of you with us. Yet another day, folks, another week. Believe it or not, it's already the eighth day of April. April. Yep. And we got so much to discuss with you folks. Leon Logan is here. Camilo Cox from Six is here. Good to have all of you. Uh, I see Ganesh Mai Paul says Region 3 had blackout over the weekend. Yep, yep. Sad. I'm sad about that because I know... Ganesh is very hard working and Ganesh would need that power. Would need that power to do the awesome work he's been doing. Keeping the Jagabats accountable. So good morning, Ganesh, folks. A member of parliament, Ganesh Mahi Paul, is on the live. And he's living in the region that one of the uh, people who got oversight over GPL is living. And no, no doubt uh, that Ganesh is not living as large as that uh, government official. And I'm talking here about um, Indar, dear that Indar, the honorable member, <laughs> member of parliament and minister of the government, dear that Indar has a, very, a sprawling palatial mansion over there. Yeah, and we can talk about some of that because we got some issues coming out of Eiffel, for instance, the cost of living knocking everybody. So did, uh, uh, did that Indar is a very palatial dwelling over there in Region 3. They tell us the place is so big, he has to get around using something like a golf cart. You know that um, something similar to what transports people transport people from the front of Giflan Mall on the road into Giflan Mall. Yep, he says he has to get something like that to ferry himself and relatives around the property. So it is, it is so sprawling. Ganesh, it is so huge. Palatial. Yeah, the spread. The house is just, that's your house, you know. Driving from one area to the next. The dwelling, you gotta, this is like a half mile drive in to get to the front door. All of that just come into government. All of that and it's just, just come into government. Yeah, we know the whole thing. We know the whole story. Donna Daly, good to see you. Rax Ricardo. Emerson Holder is here. Folks, how you all doing? I got a black tea here. Was gifted this very nice cup. Those who um, send the cup, you all know yourselves. How's Marvin doing this morning? Marvin Company. Who, who don't know? Elizabeth Howard is here. Evelina Whitaker is here. Good to have you, Evelina. You know, the Deputy Chief of Missions for the EU, European Union. She's an Evelina as well. All the Evelinas I know are nice people. I knew Evelina from UG, a lecturer, very nice person. All the Evelinas seem to be very nice people. And on the other hand, the Ganishes, uh uh. The Ganishes, they stop training and say, you know. The garnish is, is something else. Not to be trifled with. Evelina's are very nice. Well, guys, I hope you guys have had a, a good weekend. 
I read Slim again. I didn't get in much exercise this weekend. I usually uh, go into the park and put in at least a five, a five laps. You know? Didn't get a chance to do that. Had some other activities over the weekend. Nonetheless, I got some church in me over the weekend. I hope Ganesh got some spirituality into him. That's the only how you could keep strong out here, you know. Because good folks, Neon Harding, Evelina, Vashti Magnot, Luan Hall, Anthony, Savannah Page, Gwen Anderson. You all know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places. How was sung there? Not a bad way to start the week. I wanted to go off to a concert that was happening at um, the cathedral. Yesterday on break down, yesterday afternoon, I came back from Burbies feeling so tired. My Lord. I went to rest and come back feeling tired. Carlton Smith. Charles Hollingsworth, Onika Light, Gwennett, Peter Alfonso, good morning to you. Van Steve Forbes, Belinda, and all the other folks joining us. Folks, let's get to the first <laughs> 15 or so things we think you wonderful folks ought to know about as we start the day today. Brennan Thompson is here. Crystal Rodriguez is here as well. Belinda Hall, you know, my grandmother was married Hall. Not halls, but hall. So we, we might just be family. <laughs> my grand, my grandmother married hall. Yeah. yeah, my mother's mother. That is. How are you folks doing there this morning, guys? We trust that all is well and all is good. Let's start on the first shift. It's about twenty-five. Let me just warn you. <laughs> We're making up for the mornings when we fall short at thirteen or twelve or two. Folks are saying they're hearing us loud and clear. That's how we want to be heard. A lot, a lot of things happening, folks. First up, they're telling us that a house at Linden, this was a Rewa Oval Retrieve. Linden, a house went up in flames on Saturday night. And this property apparently belonged to one Douglas Joseph, who is now homeless in Linden, they tell us. 77 years old, you know, you get to 77, you think you can be, you know, rest and, and so on. Uh -uh. Them boys coming for you because people are saying that this fire at a river Oval Retrieve Linden was deliberately set to the residence of Douglas Joseph. Let's pray for him. It's an easy thing. One day you got a house, right? One day you have a home, you have a residence. And then next day, not so much. Next day, not so much. So let's pray for our brother, Douglas Joseph. They say this was a two-story concrete structure owned by one Daryl Joseph. The police are asking in the Ghana Fire Service, anybody with any information as to who would want to set fire to the gentleman's home maliciously. Douglas Joseph's home, 77 years old, he's now homeless, you know, but every, every day, it's a fire in this country, every day, again, that home was owned by Daryl Joseph, Douglas was occupying it at the time, and anyone with information, they're being asked to step forward, fires left, right and center, my God, project yourselves, eh? be careful, be careful. You see, when we're leaving home, double check, triple check, going to bed at night. Things that should be plugged out, plugged out, turn off. Turn off the gas bottle, turn off the cylinder. You know, be extra careful. Don't leave unnecessary things plugged in. I see people charging their phones by the bed, leaving the cord on the bed and all of that. Right? One of my pet peeves is to see people using a phone and charging it at the same time. How long the phone the phone charge? Monitor it. When it finishes, you unplug, wrap up your card nice, and you tuck away. It's just me. <laughs> it's just the eye. But while that was happening there, that was Saturday night, they tell us that 
Retrieve Linden. North Rhinebelt. This is now Georgetown. North Rhinebelt is on the periphery of Georgetown. Five family, family members are homeless as a result of this fire here in North Rhinebelt. Yeah. I ain't tell you, not a day goes by. One Judy Lynch, pretty young woman of 29, her husband and son, Andrew Marks, and daughter-in-law and the grandfather, all are now homeless. Judy homeless, your husband, Andrew, the daughter-in-law, the grandfather. Fire destroyed their home at Postal Street in Stevie Doe Housing Scheme. Right? And this preceded the one in Linden. This was Friday night. They tell us around 1,800 hours. This fire happened. Right? And again, this happened in Postal Street. Stevie Doe Housing Scheme. And they said the family had occupied this property for over 30 years and they have now lost millions of dollars due to this fire. Right? Due to this fire. But hold on. Hold on for the kicking out. Let's sit down. God. I'm at the edge of my seat here. I even want to go tumbling upside down. <laughs> Nationally here. Hold on for the kick out. Brennan Thompson, Irwin Dunn, Carlton Smith, brace it over. Yvonne Ramasar, Karen Archibald here with us too. Brian Daniels. How are you good folks doing? We have over 600 persons watching our morning program live. And we're so privileged for that. So privileged. This fire at Postal Street, Stevie Lowe Housing Scheme, which has left Judy Lynch, her husband, her son, the daughter-in-law and grandfather, all homeless, is said to have been electrical of origin. Electrical in origin. Right? And the family says that it had been experiencing some electrical issues of recent due to frequent power outages. Yep. So the folks feel it's, it's GPL bandung the house. That is what they're saying here. The fire is believed to have been electrical in origin as the family has been experiencing electrical issues due to frequent power outages. You cannot leave your guards down, folks. Especially, as this family said, with the frequent power outages. Unplug. The things you got unplugged. Maxine Monroe, Yvonne, double check, triple check. I always check for the iron to make sure the iron is unplugged. Always. Make sure the iron unplugged. Phone cables unplugged. The things you got charging. Right? If you get it not in your spirit, take out the fridge and the TV as well. Check out the fridge on the television. Can't be too careful. The family says that they believe the fire is electrical in origin. At least the report says that. As they have been experiencing, they have been experiencing some electrical issues of recent owing to the frequent power outages. How are the power outages treating you all? How is it treating you all, folks? Be honest now. How is it treating you? I'm trying to button up my jacket. How is it treating you? Sean of Fortune, Royce and Frank, Vashi Magnus, even Ramos and Paul Greaves. How is it treating you? Do let us know, good folks, our thoughts and prayers with all these families, whether it retrieve Linden, Arriva Oval, retrieve Linden, or it's Postal Housing Scheme, Stevie Door. Our thoughts for them. I don't want to know what that's like. Not knowing where you're going to put your head down tomorrow. But our thoughts for them and hope that they get some help. Hope that they get some help. But while we run GPL, while we run GPL, this lofty topic, Julian Pitt, Marilyn Thomas, Edward Broom, while we are on GPL, Debbie Collins, 
Brewsters. Telling us that they're closing the Brewsters locations until later this month. And they're citing some power issues as well. They said they're temporarily closing the Guyana locations because blackouts have caused several or a rather a large amount of spoilage ice cream you got to keep it at a certain temperature and may have damaged their equipment as well Brewsters I wonder if Irfan Ali Barrett Jack Dio Barrett Vikram never, never Vikram Barrett Dio that Prime Minister, if they read these things and see what their incompetence doing and wreaking on this country, right? I wanted to wake up and see that. So Brewster says, and Brewster's got quite a few locations nationally. Yvonne Ramasar, Horace Calder, Marlon Thomas, Paul Greaves. Brewster's got a couple locations nationally. And then Brewster's saying, we, we pull him back a little bit. We pull him back a little bit. They say the cold storage has malfunctioned. That's the equipment they're talking about. And the company believes that the erratic power supply has caused the malfunction, resulting in significant losses. That's what they're saying. Erratic power supply resulting in significant. You can't run a business on GPL in its current form. Very finale. And we told you guys some of what the vice president said last week. Oh, he feels the pains. Of Guyanese who got to face blackouts. I'm telling you what he said. He said, I feel your pain. He said, I get my blackouts too. Right? He said, I get my blackouts too. That's part of what he said. Yeah. I feel the pain, he says. I get my blackouts. But let me generate this kicking. Well, perhaps Brewster, I need to get this like that. Perhaps Brewster ain't got it locked down like that. Like the rest of us. No, we got big fancy generator that can switch over. You all know how we trying here. You know, how we trying, as they say, to keep your head above water. You all know how we try. <laughs> but folks, listen. It is what it is, yeah? It is what it is. And better must come. Better must come. That's all we can say there. Better must come. So the fire and Steve, you know, the folks says, GPL. Bruce says, Closing and locations, plural, GPL. And no heads in rolling, you know. All of the government telling you, things bad, GPL. That's what the vice president told us last week. Things bad, GPL. They keep the same square pegs. They put the wrong holes. Nobody moving. Nobody not shifting our GPL. I know what, folks. They look at that and they call it leadership. Sad to say. They look at it and they say, This is this here is leadership. 
You see them meeting with the top brackets and the who and the what and the... You know the old story. Take a look at some of what Mr. Jack Joe said recently about GPL in this press conference. This is, I think this is last Thursday. Take a look. So, one statement. Oh, expanded generation capacity. And they had multi-year planning at GPL. Now, the situation is bad. There is no... There is no sugarcoating this. That we have a situation at GPL that we've explained a hundred times before. But often, explanations don't suit people when the light goes off because it disrupts their lifestyle. It disrupts their normal activities. It, it causes untold hardships for them. Sometimes their equipment, uh, they get destroyed. So I understand the feeling there because we live in this society and when the light goes off four or five times at home for me too, I have a generator, but it creates sometimes problems there too. But I can imagine, for me, it's disruptive. For me, it's disruptive. We pick up the phone immediately and call what's going on again. Every, every day, this is something. So we are not going to say that people are not justified in the harsh comments they make. Because it, we feel it ourselves. Because we live here and we're consumers. It's not that the government is aloof from these concerns. So sometimes explanations don't help at that moment. Yeah. We live here, we feel it too. They don't feel it nothing. Don't let us fool ourselves. Them boys ain't feeling nothing. You all remember how they got the lands at Pradoville 2 and 3 and 4? Yeah. You all remember just for his house? GPL ran a whole host of big industrial transformers and so on. You remember that? When you power flicking off and on, you got them kind of power and authority. You got a whole GPL team fixing transformers for you, diverting power for you. If soon as light goes, your generator kicks in instantaneously, how are you going to feel what the rest of us feeling? We see Jack, you come out here to Gap. So Brewster says they're closing the doors temporarily. Temporarily, I want to be accurate based on what's happening with GPL. And as we told you, the folks who had the fire recently at Stevie Door, they're complaining as well. GPL is to be blamed. And if you're just joining us before we got to the Stevie Door fire, we were also talking about a fire at Retrieve Linden. Over the weekend. The fire start, folks. Fires, fires, fires. This is that fire. At Arua Oval. Retrieve Linden over the uh, over the weekend, Saturday night, they tell us. The Stevie Lowe fire was Friday night. Fires, fires, fires. Man, she feel, you feel y'all. We can't say problem, too. I feel it, y'all. You know, Elias. Debbie Collins, I'm feeling you. Anna Cummins, I'm feeling you. Beverly Book, I'm feeling you. But it's the same. You and your little flambeau. Me with my big generator that could power a small city. But it's the same. Feel your pain. Feel your pain. Feel your pain. Why are we in that? While we're on these calamities, folks, while we are yet on these calamities, last evening they tell us that a barge and tug drifted according to them. <laughs> Whole country drifting. Said a barge and tug drifted from where they're constructing the new Demar Harbor Bridge. 
into the existing structure. It drifted. Somebody didn't watch in folks and just like that, it just drift. Like how everything in this country just drift, drifting. Tug and barge, they said, collided with spans 12 and 13 and connected pontoons of the Demwara Harbor Bridge. In addition to that, they said that the investigation will be led by technical teams from the Maritime Administration Department. This is Marat, the Maritime Administrative Department. This was according to a post we saw. But the good bishop, but like this man, spiritual pores and clean. How you don't pick up these things coming and try to avoid them? You don't pick up these things you foresee, you know. People call themselves all kinds of names, prophets and prophets of doom, more likely. They said the dog dripped. <laughs> Nobody they watching. This whole country drifting. See, they told me everyone was driving the barge, captaining in the barge. I would not be surprised. Drift. Drift into the harbor bridge. Thankfully, the bridge is still operable. Folks, I know it's early in the morning. I know it's, a, I know it's early in the morning. I know it's early in the morning. Paulette Greaves and Brenda and Singh, Julian. I know it's early in the morning. Y'all ever see a more crossing government than this one? Y'all ever see a more crossing? Alibaba and the 40 thieves. And the seven plagues. Y'all ever see a more cross? Y'all ever see a more crossing government than this one? Tug and barge associated with the construction of the new harbor bridge just drift towards the southern side of the existing structure. This drift. So whoever moored it there, just drive up close to the new the, the new structure they put in now. And just walk away and let the tug. Tug and barge. Just drift. Oops. <laughs> no country on earth like Guyana. None whatsoever. No country on earth like ours. None. And as we run that, as we run the Harbor Bridge, they're telling us that government is now acquiring lands. I think this is via compulsory acquisition. More lands. That will connect some roads to this new harbor bridge. And what a lot of folks have found very distasteful about this aspect of it is when government come and try to beat you down and pay you next to nothing for your land. And so the folks are of the opinion some of this land in really connected directly to the harbor bridge is what some people want for friends, family, and favorites. Like how you know the no by the Demar Harbor Bridge, you got Eminem. Well, some of them want to set up their own businesses close to the new one. So they have been an or there's, there's an order now to acquire land to facilitate roads leading to this new harbor bridge. Of course, this new harbor bridge is costing. I think they say 260 million US dollars. A lot of money. A lot of money. So we're watching these, these developments. We're watching these developments, folks. Right? We're watching them. And of course, they're telling us also that this bridge is going to stretch from Nandi Park on the East Bank to Lagrange on the West Bank. That's where it's going from. Either side of the Demar River. Either bank of the Demar. We're watching it. 
You watching it? And as we run that as well, you know the good bishop <laughs> featuring very large on these many issues. As we run that as well, the government, by the bishop says it's going to be a crackdown on errant truck drivers. It's about time. You know? Part of the trouble we have in this country, Beatrice and Julia, Loretta and Gail, part of the problem we have in this country is that we have a government that doesn't like order, structures, systems. No, no, no. So they had one of these PR meetings quite recently with truck drivers and members of the Ghana police force. See? And this is meant to show, oh, leadership. We're leading here. Leadership. But if you have a proper functioning traffic department, a proper strategy, period, that deals with traffic and more than just traffic, mobility of your citizens. These knee-jerk reactions, you wouldn't see them. Again, we're forced to ask the question, anything working right in this country? Look what Tony Vera said over the weekend about the sugar industry. Look at the fast meeting they had about the power sector, electricity supply, GPL. Look what's happening on our roads where these truck drivers are concerned. Anything working? You know how much levels of breakdown you have to have. Before a president of a company say, I want to meet all the, the president of a country say, I want to meet all the managers of this company here. Things so bad. Things so bad on the road. You got to bypass the traffic department. Uh, your city police. I, I want me to truck drivers. You have to have such a breakdown. You understand? So some of these key changes that they're proposing is the prohibition of excessive motor vehicle operation or truck operation during peak hours. Excessive. But I don't know how they're going to balance that with this big industrial boom that they're touting. Is more projects going to fall behind? They said also they're looking at provision of mechanisms for drivers to rest in between long periods on the road. I thought this was like a no-brainer. You think this is something that occurs almost naturally. Mechanisms for drivers to rest in between long periods on the road. I know they can build some huts by the road corner. What? And then they tell us that the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission will also en engage all loom, sand pit, and quarry owners regarding the weight of trucks leaving the mines. So Ghana Geology and Mine jumping in there. And they're also telling us that the cabinet has approved for the purchase of scales for use on the roads. So I don't know how they're going to pull all this in. You know, when you come around by the jumpy board, you might see a, a big scale waiting for you there. Like you have by the Harbour Bridge. You're heading out by um, the highway off of Sheriff Street. It's a big scale. I don't know how they're going to do it. You see, they just pull things out of thin air. You, you, you wake up with a dream. You pull things out of thin air. This one was quite um, <laughs> brow raising for us. They said the minister appealed to truck drivers to look out for female drivers on the road. What are you all insinuating here? That's the reporting that we have. That the minister appealed to truck drivers to look out for female drivers 
on the road. Yeah, buddy. Women don't drive good on the roads in this country. That's, that's what you all say. As against men. Is that what we're saying here? Everybody got to be on the lookout. Everybody. And you all know that colloquial way we say it here. That you got to assume everybody mad on the road and you, you as a driver, you're the only one that's saying. So I don't know why they're coming out here and say, oh, watch for the women. Watch for the women. I don't know if I see women caught in accidents on the roadway here. This, disproportionately what men are doing Neon Hardy Leslie Hamilton Mia Miller what is saying here so all, all, all that's happening kudos to the folks who helped to raise some finance over the weekend for Palestine they said about 72.5 million dollars was raised to support the folks who are suffering really bad on, on, on the gas up. You know, before all this war happening a couple of years ago, who was gas and who is gully? In the Caribbean, was a big thing. If you're the real bad, you gas up. I don't see people running out now. All oh, those people should be catching some flights and heading to the gas up. All the bad men. Gaza and Gully. Who's Gaza? Who's Gully? So kudos to the folks. They said that the Ramadan village who supported this fundraiser and helped to raise $72.5 million. A lot of money. Raised at the Ghana National and Ramadan village. And again, this was support Palestine. They said they um, funds were handed over to one of the uh, humanitarian agencies in Palestine. But these donations, they say as well, do not directly, um, sorry, these donations do not include, or rather they exclude contributions that were made directly to the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana, at their bank account. Right? And they said that this aims, as I said, to contribute to the humanitarian efforts, humanitarian humanitarian aid um those efforts in gaza uh, which has been battling with israeli forces and you know the whole 411 on that but that's what this one is aimed to do 72.5 million dollars congrats to the folks who were a part of raising this money uh, for those affected by this war the the israeli war against the palestinian or vice versa you know the whole nine yards of it so congrats to those persons who are instrumental in doing this. Look at that three following. Look at that three following. The Secretary General, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, in a statement quite recently and thankfully has said that the Commonwealth rejects Venezuela's organic law for the defense of Esequibo. His madness. It's madness. And it's so sad to see, you know, the Venezuelan hierarchy having to agree to this foolishness with the mad dog of Latin America, Maduro. It's so sad to see them because some of this just makes no sense. You can't even attempt to rationalize it. You can't even attempt to rationalize it. So I want to thank, I want to thank the Commonwealth Secretary General, Patricia Scotland. Venezuela's ours. Well, that you. Esequibo is ours. Esequibo is ours. Full, final, and complete. And I know the trolls from Venezuela, they're going to cut this and then they're going to have a field day on Twitter and other places. And I'm certain we got some great folks from Venezuela. You know? Great folks. But some are being led astray 
by the propaganda of Maduro and his acolytes. But we're going to continue to stand against that. Venezuela belongs to Guyana. It's full, final, complete. And you all know the award of 1899, the Geneva Convention, 1966, all of that reinforces this piece of real estate, magnificent and beautiful. And folks, last Friday morning, I was in Esequibo. I was at Kupui, the village of Kupui. And tonight's broadcast, I'm going to share some of what took me there to Kapui to talk with some of the lovely residents. A lot of corruption happening in these PPP managed councils. And that's a hint. A lot of corruption happening there. And that is part of what took me to Kapui on Friday morning. Part of what took me there Friday morning. Kapui and, and the Asiquebo. So you can hear more about that. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. Beautiful region. Region 2. Beautiful region. Had a fantastic time there with um, the chairman of the PNCR, member of parliament, Sherwin Holder. Had a fantastic time talking with some folks there. And we can share some of that with you in this evening's broadcast. But as we as ours. Right? Maduro, our Venezuelan brothers and sisters, it is ours. So let's stop this nonsense. Let's stop this nonsense. So the Commonwealth Secretary General, as the discussion has led us here, has expressed concern over Venezuela's move to seize Ghana's territory through this organic law. And as you guys, if you've been following, this law seeks to create a new state in Venezuela, this organic law. But the defense of Esequibo seems uh, seeks to create a new state in Venezuela with the head of state having powers to elect a governor and the National Assembly having legislative functions over Esequibo. It's madness. Folks, it's madness. I just have you know. And in this statement, folks, the Secretary General echoed what has been talked about and mentioned and um, reiterated by the International Court of Justice. You know, since those provisional measures were handed down some months ago, that Venezuela should refrain. This was echoed by the Secretary General. Then Robert Miss Scotland, that Venezuela should refrain from taking any action that would modify the current situation. As well, the Secretary General urged both Guyana and Venezuela to manage the dispute in ways that guarantee the peace and stability of the Caribbean region, which is what CARICOM has been saying as well. So these are some of the issues that we're, we're watching this morning. Right? Some of the issues we're watching, as, as we are not to, as we are not to, the White House advisor, or rather the U.S., National Advisor on Security, or National Security Advisor, a better way to put it. The U.S. National Security Advisor, John Kirby, just last Thursday, dismissed, of course, more propaganda out of Caracas that the U.S. was building a secret military base in Esequibo. Dismissed it. This is part of the propaganda. You see, Folks looking for justification. Maduro is accusing the U.S. of having a secret military base and CIA headquarters in Guyana to attack southern and eastern Venezuela. <laughs> Those are the allegations Maduro putting forward here. Everett Leonard, Vachti Marlon, Marilyn Thomas, Leslie Thomas, madness. <laughs> madness. And the National Security Advisor, John Kirby, dismissed the rumor, stating that the U.S. had no plan to establish a military base in Guyana. That's just the facts. Those are just the facts. So thank you, 
National Security Advisor, Mr. John Kirby. Again, again, Venezuelans, again. We're looking for an interpreter who can help us out because we got to translate some of this. So our brothers who don't speak English can understand us. The U.S. has no intention of building any secret military base or CIA headquarters in Guyana. Again, Venezuelans and brothers and sisters. So let's pull back from this. And let's just live in peace and love and unity. As Ewart Benjamin says, God is great. God is great. Come to the issues we're following, folks, and we're running up to program time. Running up. You know, once we start talking about the National Assembly in Guyana not functioning, I was about to say not functioning to its optimal, but I ain't gonna lie to myself. Not functioning. Them boys run out. Oh, they have, they have some legislation. Plan to send away of the National Assembly. I saw the speaker at that fundraising event. For aid to Palestine. Everything else. Every conceivable other thing has his attention. Then what he should really be giving his attention to. Every other thing. But the proper functioning of the National Assembly. See, if it says three key bills are coming, are on the way to Parliament for the enhancement of Ghana's healthcare system, tell you, medicine bill, a medicine bill, public health bill, on the way, <laughs> you know, over the weekend, Starbuck News had an editorial, and part of it says, you know, the president got to move from this language of soon to immediately. Because he soon is three years and pending. Four years and pending. But he said soon. When he says soon. Three years later, soon and come yet. Starbuck News makes the point. You got to move from soon to immediately. So they say, uh, telemedicine bill is on the way. A medicine bill is on the way. Public health bill. The National Assembly hardly meets. Hardly. What's going to tell me that? Hardly meets. Hardly. You know? It's just the way it is. They came in uh, uh, January, February. Budget. Money. It's prostitute business happening here. They'll come back between July and August. More money. November, December, back again. Supplemental budget, more money. It's prostitution happening here. That is what is happening. Political prostitution of the National Assembly. That is precisely what is happening here. They go on to say that um, a number of bills have passed through the National Assembly since they've taken office, and that um, some of these bills, which are medical in origin or aims, seek to enhance the regulatory system for nurses, midwives, and nursing assistants in Guyana. And it's up to you all to familiarize yourselves with them. No, 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 they're not going to do any educational PR or so on. It's up to you, nurses, midwives, and nurses, sisters, doctors, and so on. Healthcare professional. It's up to you all to familiarize yourself. That's what, that's what the reporting says. That's what the reporting says. We want to know why we are where we are. Why well, that's happening on that side. Of course, you know, crime. Out to hand in this country. Ropes and Ben. Incapable incompetent on these issues incapable and incompetent in these issues so western hines was shot they tell us on sunday this was a robbery on charlotte street 35 year old laborer western hines 
अच्छा थैंकफुली और नॉट ही वाज शॉट टू हिज अपर लेफ्ट आई दे सेड टू आइडेंटिफाइड मेन अप्रोच्ड वेसन हाइंस ऑन अ मोटरसाइकिल रॉब्ड हिम एंड फ्लैड Thankfully, this 35-year-old Western Hines is receiving medical treatment at again a public hospital cooperation. Thankfully, but crime is just doing its own thing, and we're all at the mercies of them boys. Crime doing its own thing. Life is not crime; it's carnage on our roads and waterways. Young man. Three weeks after an accident, you know, to come to injuries, a motorcycle ha- um, accident. They said this was a, a police chase gone wrong on the East Coast. Some reports said the police slammed into the guys who were trying to evade interception. I think this was March 12. This accident happened. They are being pursued by police. And Ramesh, Harry Prashad, was hospitalized ever since. It never regained consciousness. Was hospitalized until his death. And one Hemraj Muhammad was also 17 year old young people was also injured. And Ramesh Harry Prashad now has gone on to the great beyond. Left his family of none parel. Long fences, asking for justice as, as well. Three weeks after this accident, Ramachari Prashad succumbed to his injuries quite recently. These are just some of the issues that have become so pervasive every day in this country. Every day in this country, is it Friday? We lost two. Teachers, two teachers from a system and a sector that can scarcely afford any losses. Two teachers in a boating accident. Who was involved? Ghana Defence Force boat crashed into this boat where these teachers. I think they were heading home. It's madness. Madness, absolute madness, and we saw over the weekend uh, Brigadier Omar Khan, some members of Region One, visiting the families. We say here colloquially, post mortem don't bring back dead. Our thoughts and prayers with Adrian Thomas and Helen Rebai. These were the teachers who lost their lives. Some other folks survived, including, I think, a six-month-old baby. So, teacher Adrian Thomas is gone. Helen Rebai is gone. They said the GDF boat was trying to negotiate a turn and slammed into this other boat. Folks, y'all understand what's happening in this. In this country, you think we understand the madness? Huh? Think you understand the madness? Last week, the Alliance for Change, its press conference says it has some thoughts on public security and how we may be able to pull the security sector back from the brink. Take a listen. The AFC notes with grave concern the upsurge in crimes, road fatalities, domestic violence, and generally activities which make Guyana seemingly an insecure place. Corruption, petty and large scale, run riot in government and its various institutions. This state of insecurity in Guyana will be a driver for further migration to other lands 
of our more skilled and professional, even if not of our unskilled. The AFC posits that key obstacles to getting it right in the public security sector include corruption within law enforcement and impunity and complicity with certain leading members thereof. The PBB government does not want to admit and address these key obstacles, nor to demand from law enforcement the transparency and accountability needed. It must be appreciated that not continuing the major overhaul of the security sector as had started under the coalition government, but bringing back some forces that operated with impunity will be a blank check that could lead to disaster. The AFC then urges the government to immediately recommence the implementation of the recommendations of the British security sector reform. B, craft a policing strategy that is compatible with democracy and not a strong man, iron-fisted state. C, actively work with communities to prevent the public from distrusting law enforcement while at the same time incentivizing good and effective police behavior through training, merit-based selections and promotion procedures, delivering better salaries and benefits, and implementing rigorous evaluation programs. D, channeling more resources now available under the PSA 2016 by the coalition government into anti-corruption vetting systems for especially senior officers of the law enforcement agencies, especially the Ghana Police Force, for personnel screening tests and recurrent accountability scrutiny. E, adopt a wider surveillance system, expanding on the smart city project earlier started in the coalition government. F, enhancing road signing infrastructures and continuing it to help drivers on our roads. G, very importantly, halt the politicization of law enforcement agencies. Guyanese lose confidence once they see or perceive that its officers prioritize the interest of the PVP over those of the country. And finally, convene meetings of the Parliamentary Committee on Public Security so that the opposition, as like in the opposition of the opposition in the coalition government, can scrutinize the Guyana Police Force, the Guyana Fire Service, and the Ghana Prisons Service. Yeah. We got to do something, folks. We got to do something. Carnage on our roads, the crime uptick, cocaine like you've never seen it before, marijuana and ganja like you've never seen it before, corruption in the police force. We got to do something. We got to do something. Something's got to give. Something's got to give. Cost of living extremely high in Guyana. How the cost of living treating you folks? You know, every week for the last 70 weeks, Sabak News has been doing this cost of living column article. It publishes it on a Monday. And without fail, people have been complaining about the cost of living. These ad hoc. One off hamper, one off cash grant. Cash grant of thirty thousand dollars. You got two years ago. Is that thirty thousand US? The hundred and fifty US dollars can last you five years. Prices are going up. You know, one might hazard to say inexplicably. But people wages and salaries not following. I see the Ghana Teachers Union says, strike action looming again because the government, the government has breached protocols, policies. 
And of course, you know, there's been that breakdown with the, uh, what do you call it, collective bargaining meetings that have been happening. She said, hey, hey, they're in back up because his teachers are concerned about how the cost of living is impacting them. And so for the last, how many ever months they were, 70 weeks rather, Sandberg News has been examining how the cost of living has been affecting citizens. And as we wrap up this morning, folks, I want to reflect on some of what people told Starbuck News quite recently. Now, the area in post questions to people, I flood. I flood. This is one of the core areas where the PPP draws its support. The administration of the day. The People's Progressive Party Civic led administration draws its support for my flood. And residents here are concerned about the cost of living. See to Washington, a pensioner. See, this is everything in the market expensive. She's a family of five. I think she says she has two grandsons, her son and daughter-in-law. She says, I receive my monthly pension. My son and daughter-in-law, they work. And at the end of the month, Sita confesses to the News. We still don't got enough. When we pay rent, GPL, the born and people house is TV door. Rack up the equipment for Brewster. When they finish paying GPL and rent, we can buy grocery. And see, this says the cost of living hard on us. Everything gone up. Quoting Sita. Everything gone up in the market. Everything gone up. That's what city says. Everything gone. Baby says the rain. That's the woman's given name. Says the cost of living really high. Prices for everything have increased in the market. Baby says the rain is a single parent. She said, I receive survival benefits. And my monthly pension. Survival benefits, monthly pension, baby says tonight. Right? She said, even get help from a son. And when I finish paying utility bills, whatever money left, I gotta buy food to get me through the month. Right? She said, I used to do domestic work, baby says tonight. Right? But I stopped since the people can't afford to pay me. Things tight for everybody. Things tight for the people who used to pay baby sister. Right? And she confesses to Sabbath News. Not New Nation. Not the key from the AFC. Not New Nation out of Sabbath News. To, out of um, PNC, I rather. But she confesses to Sabbath News. Things hard with me. Things hard with me. She said the government... Recently distributed a hamper, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. But she said the prices out there, rough and tough. Rough and tough. self rising flower. Baby says, I used to be $300. Now it's five sixty. dollars Evaporated milk is $200, now three. One liter sunflower cooking oil gone up in the market. Right? She says pumpkin that was $200. It's still $200, but it's smaller. <laughs> That's what she said. $200, you can still buy pumpkin, but the quantity is smaller now. Nerissa Chan, 23 year old house, housewife. She said, my husband is the sole provider. 
We were a family of four. I got two kids. My husband does all the marketing. She got real nice. Does all the grocery shopping. And Richard Chan says the cost of living is high. But we try to cope with it, she says. A normal box of cereal in the market has increased. A medium tin of foreign leaf milk has increased. This used to buy milk for 6,000. No milk is 8,000. I used to purchase cereal for 2,100. Nurse says. It's now 2,500. She said, we just, in, a, in exasperation, we just have to cope with the cost of living. We just got to, and you see, I find when I when I when I read some of the responses from these folks at IFLA, oh, you could tell how politics is front and center in this country. They walk in the middle line. They want to blame the PP government. So they say, you know what? Is the sellers need to lower the price? <laughs> in some of the instances, is the sellers. The government trying. <laughs> the government trying. Mahesh Lal, pensioner. She got trouble too. Cost a living hard when purchasing food items, Mahesh Lal says. Everything very, very high. She said, try with my monthly pension, but things are high on my family and I. Right? She's a family of six, including. A daughter, son-in-law, and the three children. She said, my son-in-law is the only one working. Could you imagine that? Six in a family. The son-in-law is the only person working. You can imagine how they got things tough. Right? She said, the cost of living is harder than us. Right? She said, she don't really do a lot of marketing. Mahesh Lal. But she said her daughter tells you how costly food items are sold in the market. When you go to the price, the, the, sorry, when you go in the shop, the prices for food items always increasing. That phrase is there, always increasing. Always increasing. She said, come plan. A couple of months back was 1200 that she buys for sustenance, for strength, for vitality. It's a pensioner. Complain with 1,200, it's 1,500 now. She has medication, she says. Right? She said when the clinic doesn't have, listen to this. When the clinic, when the government managed clinic, don't have the medication, she got to go to the pharmacy. She got to purchase medication for $2,500. Medication is now 5,000. What are you going to do? Mahesh Shalal says. We can't do anything. That's where me she disagree. What are you going to do? Can't do anything. A fine line people walking. Fine line. I'll give you one. Ramona. Rambarose. 50-year-old housewife. She said, everybody knows the rising cost of living is ongoing. Everybody knows. Ramona Rambaro says, my husband and I live alone. Two of them. It's no matter if you got six or you got two. She said, how's he wasn't feeling so well? He just returned to work. And he's by shrimp. Clean and sell back to people who want. See? She hustling. She ain't buying marijuana, she ain't buying cocaine. I buy shrimp. Clean and sell back to people who want. I sell other things as well as a side hustle. She's trying to supplement income to meet the budget. She said the cost of everything gone up in the market. The prices of Grocery have increased in the market. Ramona Rambo Rose. Right? That's what she says. 
I'm telling you what the lady said. Things are rough. Diwani rice. A 90 pound bag of Diwani rice, she says. Was 6,000. Now increased to 12,000. What am I calling the brand right? Diwani rice. Thunderbolt flour. Poriate. It used to be for a little back. Now it's 540. Turn the boat flower. And she comes to the conclusion that the government should increase person salaries to help with the rising cost of living. That's the conclusion she's come to. Increase the salary to help with the rising cost of living. I'm taking one more for good measure. Let me wrap up. Sandra T. Singh, a pensioner, says the cost of living affecting me and my family when we're buying food items. So my grandson here with me. He works part-time, and I receive my, mo my monthly pension. Sandra T. Singh. He helps to provide for us when he works, but it's not enough to support us. Everything gone up, Sandra T. Singh says. A 10 kg carby rice a couple of months back was 1800. It now costs 2200. The cost of a one liter cooking oil was 300, is now 750. These are the words of Chandrauti, the thoughts of Chandrauti Singh. She said, When I finished paying my water bill and electricity bill, the money that left, I can't buy grocery. I can't buy grocery. That's what Chan Drouty says. Well, I don't pay the water and electricity bill. Everything up. Everything up. Sky high. I'll close on this note. I'll close on this note. As I said, the teachers are saying, strike action looming because of the breakdown in the talks. And this cost of living impacting teachers as well. Impacting teachers as well. The village councils in the indigenous communities, they're going to vote shortly on new leadership. They got some cost of living issues as well. They are telling us lots of the PAP line to shows, thiefing out the money. Nothing coming to them. Thiefing out the money. And as I said, I was in Kupui on a Friday getting for you folks the valid and credible information. Two shows thiefing out the money. And that's what they're telling us. And in the same breath, in the same breath, government says for the first quarter of 2024, it earned $126 billion in oil revenue. Where the money going? That's what they're telling us. They earned $126 billion. Billion dollars in oil revenue. Now the teachers strike loans because teachers want a decent pay. Where in indigenous communities or otherwise, people are crying out the high cost of living in this country. What's doing with them? For the first quarter, you yeah, earned 126 billion. Where the money going? Where is the money going? Where the money going? That is the note I want to end. A question for you to answer. Where's the money going? Cost of living continues to soar. Unabated. Where's the money going? That is the question. Folks, thanks for joining us this morning. The hundreds of you, over 1,300 of you, joined our broadcast. And we are eternally grateful. Thank you for joining us. 
Dak Dylan Johnson, James, and Dan Graves and Lee. Dan has, a, has an answer. Dan's in the pockets. James said he's stealing the oil money. Beryl, see you there, Beryl Crawford, P. Alicock, Mark Garnett, Vanilla Garnett, the whole Garnett clan on the line. Magnet Barrow is here as well. Audrey Brown and Grassy Griffith. Folks, share the live if you haven't done so yet. Smash that emoji button, folks. Smash that emoji button, friends. Driving up the algorithm and so others can get valid and credible information as well. That's going to do it for us this morning. Clear Common Badge, we see you there. Sandra Hanover, see you there as well. Valid, credible information. Let me go. I see you too. Naomi Draka, happy Monday to you as well. Naomi, yes. Naomi, something to write home about. <laughs> Good to see you, Naomi. Diane and James, as we said. Forbes Bedouz is here. Lionel Simon, Lachman Aziz, Jamal Aziz. Good morning to you folks. Hazel Vera McIntosh is here. Jolly Anderson, Leslie Thompson, Brenda Moore is here too, folks. We're going to see you guys in the next one. Share the live before you go. Do us a big favor. Share the live before you go. And you're coming back to watch this later on too. Share the live as well, folks. And smash that emoji button for us. It's going to do us the world of good. The world of good. No time not to send us a small piece to partner with us. But if you feel so led, do that for us. What is more important? Share the line for us. Smash that emoji button for us. Folks. Valid, credible information. Stay safe, guys. That's our time. That's our program.